Hello everybody, um, I realized I haven't given a very uh, detailed talk on earthquakes and particularly spiritual earthquakes and looking at both the logical and spiritual side of why we get earthquakes on earth and looking at in detail. So I wanted to uh, discuss that and hopefully this will be a totally awesome conversation. I'm still working on some of the details at the moment right now. Um, um, but I hope to uh, get uh, this as soon as possible and uh, actually get people uh, starting thinking uh, not only logically about what's going on with earthquakes, but also spiritually. Thank you so much. So I just wanted to pause as I'm going through all this and give you a quick little view of Southeast Asia, Oceania, and all these islands. This is one of the most amazing areas for earthquakes on the planet um, and also for uh, wildlife. So I'm really sorry that it moves very slowly on my computer. That's because we're looking at thousands and thousands of earthquakes and I'm trying to move this around so you can see uh, it's just very slow. So hopefully um, it's actually not so bad uh, on a video because you don't have to deal with the slowness of it. But you can see here is Australia um, getting not a whole lot of earthquakes, but you can see how out here through uh, essentially heading up from Antarctica uh, and New Zealand, um, all these earthquakes, right? So I'm kind of pulling this slowly here, trying to do this so it doesn't look super terrible. But you can see this is basically heading down to the magnetic south pole. Um, the way that you can find the magnetic south pole is this Tasmania basically points right over into this region right in here. Um, and it does move around a bit uh, from year to year. So... Uh, but you can see um, just the extent of all these earthquakes. And I want to just travel up here so you can see this uh, before we do the full uh, study and details on this. But uh, you can see there's basically a diamond shape here um, and then a major triangle shape here um, and then something that even kind of resembles a galaxy um, with Papua New Guinea there. Um, so there's just so much going on here uh, that we really need to study. You can see my computer is having trouble even doing anything right now. Uh, I'm trying to record this and talk about it. Now you can see through the Himalayas here, um, and this is a climate map. Um, give me one second here. I need to get some water. So again, we're looking at an unbelievable amount. There's all these details here, and you can see all this like starry kind of uh, earthquake region here heading out into the center of the Pacific Ocean um, and uh, we talked about this before uh, I'm sorry I'm trying to turn this right now and it's not moving but uh, hold on a second I'm trying to free up some memory on my computer hopefully it will turn a little bit better here but uh, basically uh, you can see this is all heading up to the North Pole. So we just looked from the South Pole, and I wanted to do this so you can see. And I think I've already... Uh, sorry, it's very messed up here. Uh, so I wanted to quickly go over the major regions. And <clears throat> actually, your own personal interpretation really matters here because we're talking about <clears throat> both... This is kind of interpretation because someone worked on uh, kind of like a seismic hazard map uh, estimating things so uh i mean you'll notice certain earthquakes might seem more significant to you personally than others and that's basically the spiritual side of things um there are areas uh like for example in the middle east here up in uh basically afghanistan um that have high uh re many people agree um that there's a lot of earthquakes there obviously we're seeing a lot of earthquakes here uh, in Oceania, but it doesn't really show up on this particular map that the person is talking about, but there's other details here. So you can see Mexico being really significant. Um, also, a lot of people don't realize how many earthquakes there are uh, in Europe, uh, particularly in Greece. I mean, if you live in Greece, you know that, um, but there's actually quite a lot also even out here in Iran, uh, the Middle East, and so on. Um, and you can see some very interesting areas also uh, some kind of pockets here, um, all these other areas. So this may be helpful to you to take a look at. 
Uh, so this is part of the USGS map, I think here. Um, you might be very surprised about this map uh, kind of showing you uh, some of the pressures uh, that don't always show up on the individual earthquake map, but you can see basically the San Andreas fall, this red zone here. Actually, this is going all the way down to Mexico, and remember on this map, you can see how heavy the earthquakes are down there. So actually, it's really from Mexico, believe it or not, even though California, uh, a lot of people say uh, it's heavy earthquakes, and you can see this major spot right in the United States, kind of in southern Illinois, uh, Missouri, um, this area, right? Um, having a lot of earthquakes and then right along the coast here. So this kind of should be expected, you would think, uh, because basically if there's a buildup of the entire continent, um, continental divide being up here, um, you know, uh, but basically uh, this should be expected that you'd have earthquakes in the center and actually that doesn't always happen um, just because uh, the time frame here over millions of years, um, this may have happened millions of years ago. So you can see as we move, this is actually a relatively new spot on the map. So really, I'm totally surprised because I look at the live map oftentimes. Um, this is it right here uh, for today, for instance. And here you can see it's kind of building up all the earthquakes. You may have to mess with this map a little bit and do all magnitudes satellite imagery here. And then you can filter it by newest first or largest first to kind of see. Um, but once you get all that information there, um, you'll basically get a map that looks like this. Sometimes it's a little difficult to see. You may want to turn off the hazards map. They only unfortunately do this for the United States. I really would like to get one for the entire Earth, and I think the other map we were just looking at, um, this one over here is that map, but uh, you can see how helpful that is, basically understanding South America, um, these other regions. Um, but uh, if you turn that off and you zoom out, you can start to see this is an earthquake that happened very recently, maybe within the last hour or so. So this is pretty well updated, um, and you can see quite a lot of earthquakes in Alaska. Let me close this out so you can get the whole map. So what's really surprising is a lot of this doesn't seem to match up. Um, for instance, uh, on the long-term earthquake map will not match up with this because this is really the last 30 days. So the last 30 days could be very different than the last 100 years. So, uh, But this is still very helpful because you can see some of that is matching up. I tried to get all the data for the last 100 years on this map. So you can see here, <clears throat> I think it's at least 50 years of data so <clears throat> you can see there's just tons and tons of earthquakes here let me bring this back to the United States so you can see uh, essentially what's going on so the big surprise really is down in Mexico right you see all these earthquakes all on the west coast of Mexico um, and even in the Caribbean you'll notice there's a real lot of earthquakes even per day um, down in Puerto Rico so actually <clears throat> um, but you're at, it's actually one of the most active regions um, in the world is still in California. It's called Geysers, California. Um, up in here, they actually have a thermal power station. It's one of the biggest in the world. So they drill into the ground and use the heat from the earthquakes. And you can start to see, I don't know why it's not loading a lot of these, but you can see up in Alaska, just a major 9.2. Those do not, it's hard to appreciate how big a 9.2 is, but let me just walk you through that. I was in the car the other day with my brother, and he was like, yeah, we got a 4.0. Well, 4.0, 5.0 is 10 times more powerful than a 4.0. 5.0, there's a 6.0, that's 10 times more powerful than a 5.0. 10 times more powerful than that, 10 times is a seven, and then 10 times that is an eight, and then 10 times that is a nine. That's up here, that's the, so those are huge earthquakes. Um, moving the earth sometimes 40 feet up and down um that's you know there's certain spots that you can see pictures um you know 20 feet at the and more uh of moving the earthquake so i'm sorry this is zoomed in so much i can't really get all the details on the earthquakes unless i zoom it in but here you can start to see in the caribbean um some of that uh particularly on the south side of puerto rico um, and these other areas. Sorry if I sound a little bit funny talking about this. Uh, I'd like to get way more interesting conversation than this, but I'm trying to get all the details first um, before we uh, talk about uh, some of the other things in terms of spirituality. I want to emphasize one of the reasons that I'm not uh, going too deep into the spiritual side is really because I care about other people's ideas. I don't want to uh, make any mistakes on the spiritual side. Um, this is all the facts 
here um, in terms of where the earthquakes are. So if I start getting into uh, some pretty interesting discussion, I want to actually hear from other people and, and some other ideas just for historical purposes. Um, I'm kind of one of the first people ever to look at a lot of this information, particularly uh, kind of linking both the logical side and the spiritual side of planetary uh, astrophysics and uh, spirituality. So uh, there's kind of a, a big responsibility to do it exactly correct and make absolutely no mistakes. Um, so I wanted to be very cautious uh, in some of the conclusions that I am trying to talk about. Uh, both spiritually and logically. So I'm going to try to grab a snapshot here, but there's so many details that are really important. You can see on the ocean floor here, a lot of historical details. All of this was created by earthquakes and uh, seismic activity, basically plate movement. Um, so I'm going to grab an image here. Uh, I'm using uh, a free operating system here to do this. Um, so. Uh, you can kind of see some details here and then I'm going to grab this image and then we're going to kind of dive into some of the spiritual details in a moment as soon as I possibly can. So I just wanted to mention a couple things that might not be intuitively obvious, right? Uh, and I'm really sorry if I'm going through this quickly, but uh, there's just so much information here. So you can see all these earthquakes are basically the Andes Mountains. There's actually more significant earthquakes down here than there is in North America. And it turns out there's a lightning lake right here. And so we're really trying to combine a lot of aspects of our knowledge, uh, both logically and spiritually of what's going on in the planet, right? So uh, you can see that this actually does something uh, physical, but it actually affects life significantly, right? You can see this jungle earthquake right in here being an 8.0, which is a huge earthquake. Um, and some of these other earthquakes kind of connected to that down in South America. But this all actually interacts with the lightning um, because there's a lot of lightning right in here. So we know that basically earthquakes and lightning, and for example, if a volcano goes off, you always see a cloud of smoke up above and then you always get lightning. So there is a connection between all of these fields, uh, both spiritual and for real in terms of what's happening if the volcano explodes, uh, you get ash in the sky, and then you get lightning, and then you get people seeing that lightning, uh, and then that affects essentially everything on our planet, uh, both practically and spiritually. One of the very uh, important uh, fault lines that's really uh, important is the Atlantic fault line, uh, because it's so simple, uh, and it gives us such a practical and spiritual understanding here of how to connect the North Pole with the South Pole. Um, and you can see it basically runs right up here to the North Pole. Now the actual magnetic pole is right here, but the actual pole is somewhere in this region, right? So you can see uh, this crack basically goes through Iceland. Um, and interestingly, you can see there's a split off here into Europe that basically is the Mediterranean. So this kind of split at one point uh, between uh, essentially Europe and Africa and you can see there's the earthquakes that are still kind of affecting from that major split as well as the major split between here, uh, the, basically the two different worlds, right? So you basically have the Atlantic fault line. I'll try to zoom out here. It's going to lose some of the information, but uh, hopefully this will help you out. And I'm really sorry uh, if you're really focused on the spiritual side of this, uh, if you're going through this, uh, but I just wanted to get, uh, you know, I'm hoping that you'll have some very different ideas um, and we can talk about those. So, uh, but basically here you can see the Atlantic fault line uh, running right through here. Uh, unfortunately, the earthquakes don't really show up, but you can see it's kind of cracking here through here and then heading all the way up to the North Pole. Um, we've talked about some very interesting discussions um, spiritually where this whole plate here seems to be mirroring with, it seems to be the same. So there's kind of this inverse uh, relationship between Greenland here and this whole footprint and then actually interestingly because this fault line heads out through here there's another plate right here which is basically Saudi Arabia so this is these three things here um, really may be connected and we have to think about what that means both practically and spiritually right so we basically have human activities uh, in this region that may actually be linked to the North Pole so the Middle East itself uh, may be linked to the North Pole. Uh, one of the reasons we're starting to talk about this is we're actually trying to say, well, what should be the language, the spiritual language of the North Pole or South Pole? Um, it may be that 
um, here you can start to see India uh, essentially pointing down to the South Pole. Um, and I'll zoom in and you can see uh, some of these earthquakes. So there's a really weird split here, kind of a Y shape heading out of India. And you can see these earthquakes here. And then a potential uh, spiritual capital of Antarctica down here, right? And you can see Perth right here, uh, Cape Town, Madagascar. And then this very mysterious, very straight line heading out through here and here, basically almost mirroring uh, what's happening here in Indonesia, right? So this is very significant. And there's a little gap between here. Um, my grandfather actually sailed during a major earthquake called Krakatoa right here. So it's very mysterious because there's a lot of current, um, ocean uh, current. This is the only, like, it, the water cannot escape except through that tiny hole there. Um, so there's something very mysterious going on there um, that we need to think about, as well as this tip of India, right? Um, and so it could be that uh, if some of these things are uh, linked to the North Pole or South Pole, um, you can definitely start to see um, some action uh, on the earthquake side of things. So what's the real question? Uh, you know, if we're leaving Earth, um, both uh, on actual physical rocket ships or also spiritually, um, what would that mean? So that that was a huge question for me. I started to realize a lot of India starts to think about reincarnation, the next life. But whoa, check out the size difference of Africa, right? So if, if India is doing something uh, that's very important in terms of uh, spirituality uh, what is Africa doing right so you not only have all this jungle and wildlife here the Congo um, but a whole another uh, level of things and you can kind of see um, if Antarctica uh, does look like a brain uh, which kind of looks like a top of a brain here maybe a spinal cord heading out through here um, it's very likely that Africa itself uh, this might be a brain there's actually an eye here um, maybe even a tongue uh, earrings over here some tears there's a lot of creativity involved on the spiritual side uh, and i hope you can really take a look at it um and certainly a hundred years from now when people are looking back at this video i really it's hopefully it's going to be really funny because there's so much stuff going on um, and we really want to have a really fun experience uh, a creative experience looking at our planet as well as other planets because how we understand and i'm not saying ever make a mistake but realize that how you think about the planet really is unique to how you think. Um, and don't really get into serious arguments uh, with other people. Really focus on listening and learning about different perspectives about how the planet is actually working both logically and spiritually. So, um, And respect uh, animals and wildlife, right? There's going to be uh, so much wildlife here. Um, if you're, you know, I, I talk with a friend of mine and... Uh, He's a close friend, and I, you know, he's trying to do all this computer work. Here I am sitting on the computer. I'm doing this so other people don't have to sit on the computer, but really listen to the wildlife, right? A lot of these uh, ideas actually may be very different um, depending on the wildlife, right? Uh, so here you can see Europe. Uh, I have downloaded this before. There's actually very interesting uh, alternative ways to look at these earthquakes. Um, there's both time frames and depth. I have depth going here, so you can see these are all kind of the same depth. There are very deep earthquakes here, but uh, you can organize it in very different ways. And certainly in the future, I hope that uh, we can look at this, uh, you know, in all kinds of ways. This is really uh, early in our, our understanding of planetary spirituality and the astrophysics of our planet. So um, even though we have a lot of data here, um, certainly. Um, there's a lot of things. So I put the climate map here. There's also a temperature map um, that I've been using, and you can see that based on seasons. Um, there's rain maps and other things that you can overlay on top of this. Unfortunately, that's a lot of information. So we're trying to keep it primarily. Anyway, use anything that you think is awesome, use that. So here you can see how this is kind of, remember the tallest mountains in the world are over here. We're not really seeing all that activity uh, that we see in the Oceania area, but actually there's definitely a lot of earthquakes that have happened in Tibet. I mean, we're talking 30,000 feet. Mountains over here, 10,000 feet, 20, so we're basically three times the size uh, in the Himalayas. So there's definitely been serious amounts of activity here. Um, and you can see on the Tibet side kind of pulling out through here um, as well.
Uh, and one thing I wanted to emphasize is that the wildlife needs to listen to Earth, right? And that's why we really looked at the Southeast Asia over in here so much, so carefully, right? Both the fish and the animals. Um, but I want to switch entirely off of earthquakes for one moment. So if you haven't seen this map, this is the global lightning distribution map. Um, there's definitely different versions of this and you kind of want to not necessarily trust any one version. It's a hard thing to collect all this data uh, and study it. There's another one that I have that I like a little bit better, but this is the easiest one uh, to find uh, on the internet. So. Uh, but here you can see uh, quite a lot of details. Give me one second. It's extremely wrong for me to circle these regions. You can tell that there's quite a complexity here outside of just saying this region or that region, but uh, it helps a little bit understanding, um, at least in terms of explaining uh, from my perspective. But you can see there's some areas that you may not expect that have a lot of lightning um, as well as earthquakes. Right here, there's a pocket basically up in Pakistan. Um, and then there's another pocket right here that you get the most lightning at, on Earth, right? So even though this is white area, basically by Lake Kivu and deep in the Congo jungle, basically gets the most lightning. Um, and actually these maps vary significantly. On another map, you'd say that Louisiana gets the most lightning on Earth. So it really depends. Let me get that really quick for you. Uh, sorry, I just wanna show you some really cool lightning pictures that I was collecting. Uh, here you have a tornado. Um, let's just look at these in detail so you can see a couple of examples of some lightning. Um, and here you can see a major cloud um, and then kind of a mountain uh, with some lightning uh, that I thought was really cool. A huge cloud with some lightning above a city. Kind of hitting a house here. Um, maybe this is not a real picture there, but anyway, just show you some quick pictures. Uh, yeah, so basically, sorry, I was trying to talk about this. It's really important to try to chase down some of this lightning stuff. Um, I didn't have this recording. So basically the point here is that if there is a, a lightning strike, definitely go find out what happened right precisely there. Um, you don't actually have to go exactly there. It's very interesting because the earthquake map, the like if there's a lot of hills, it's not necessarily gonna be the same as the lightning map, right? So you will learn a lot by chasing down some of these lightning. I found there was a grain silo uh, located out in Pullman. So it taught me that there was like a lightning strike. Uh, I mean, I, I basically went with Jesus Christ out here um, and found uh, where the lightning was. So it was crazy. Uh, very interesting and awesome uh, to think about it. Not only logic, so I wasn't just saying, oh, here's the lightning strike there. I was trying to like think spiritually, kind of put on my spiritual radar as I was driving out there and think about the whole process of the lightning strike. Um, I have not been able to do this with earthquakes. I tried to do it. It was funny because we went out into the earthquake capital of Idaho and there was all this lightning for some reason. We were expecting to get an earthquake, but we got lightning instead. So it was really mysterious. Uh, there was a massive lightning storm that came in that night. My friend was getting married and uh, it was really, really awesome experience. Um, and uh, I'm so thankful for that. But uh, I definitely recommend, uh, if you're interested in the logical and spiritual side, thinking about this very carefully. Sorry, I keep going back to these maps, but there's this map here. This is another map by this company. Uh, you can see it definitely doesn't show the same uh, kind of lightning pattern. It's a way detailed here. So these guys are really awesome and you can just see uh, Louisiana and Florida getting a ton of lighting um, and that could be a really awesome time uh, Studying this lighting and actually wanted to go down here uh, and check it out. Let me try to get you some more maps Sorry about this. So I'm really sorry about this a long time ago I was able to get this on a 3d map. Uh, you can still download it look for cam L files I may even have a link to it, but you can see the lightning distribution on a 3D map here. I'll just go through the images that I stored. Some of this really amazing stuff heading out into the Pacific Ocean. And you can see that definitely the rotation of the planet affects these streams of lightning. You can see kind of heading out here, um, as well as in South America. You can see this major stream kind of going off that earthquake zone in Mexico and actually heading all the way from here. Uh, and then you can see some of that in Florida. So this has got climate. And then here's some of the North Pole. We actually get no light. And one very interesting thing is there's very few uh, earthquakes and ver very little uh, lightning on the North Pole or South Pole. Um, and you can see on the South Pole, this was a really cool image. You can kind of see there's certain little details, pockets of lightning on the South Pole there. And then here's the kind of the image of the North Pole. 
and then kind of I circled a couple spots I think here um, and then looking at Southeast Asia again I think uh, sorry about this if I'm redoing anything okay really sorry about uh, kind of jumping in between uh, different things here I'm trying to go through this as quickly as possible uh, to get people offline and not really worrying about this uh, so here's another lightning density map you can see that it definitely helps look at different ones you can see some of the details here that might not be visible. And then here's that other map that we have been looking at, uh, kind of in great detail, uh, very cool to look at, right? Um, and I think I'm trying to look at a live map here. Um, sorry about this. Uh, again, I'm super sorry about some of these details. Uh, you may be interested in actually how the uh, charges work in the clouds. You can see there is an upper negative charge upper positive and then even the multiple layers so you can get uh, sparks up here you can get sparks up there and you can even get lower so there's like inter cloud sparks uh, I think the biggest one of the biggest lightning strikes in the world was actually down in Louisiana and you can see uh, here's another map uh, I think this was actually uh, man I wish I could get the link to this but this is a I think a NASA map uh, you can kind of see it doesn't show uh, some of the details that you would need and then uh, here's some of the uh, sensors that are used uh, in terms of uh, satellite imagery. So uh, there's a lot of different ways to look at the lightning um, as well. So again, I've really been trying to focus on the spiritual side. So what I've been really trying to understand is kind of the global pattern here. Um, and I noticed there's kind of a uh, shape here. Now, this is definitely not... Um, uh, heading into the science territory. This is heading more into the spiritual side of things um, and looking at possible uh, relationships between lightning across the entire globe, right? So we're basically talking about linking uh, through here. So you saw this map is not very accurate. I think I have some details on that. So there are some emergency situations that I really want to get back to in terms of food and other things. However, this is related uh, because it's lightning and water. Um, you can see there's some really cool, this is a totally different map and you can see, uh, you know, different 10 billion events here um, on this. So uh, it actually goes into quite a bit of detail, this whole document, uh, particularly for the United States. And you can see uh, just the detail here um, for lightning. Um, we actually don't get quite a lot of lightning out west, um, believe it or not, so that's kind of interesting truth. Um, but these maps <coughs> are very detailed, um, and they go through uh, basically a lot of stuff. So it's a pretty cool document to take a look at, um, and I definitely recommend it uh, by these guys here. It's kind of hard to find it on their webpage, unfortunately, um, but uh, I think they're trying to uh, make some money from this as well. So. Uh, so again, you can see there was just some details that weren't shown on the other maps. Uh, this is kind of the public, main public Wikipedia page for lightning, lightning density, but uh, it's still pretty helpful uh, to see. Um, they have this also in the KML file, so you can load that into Google Earth. Uh, but yeah, so I just wanted to really thank everybody that's really not just thinking about this logically. Uh, and I'm really sorry about this conversation right now. I'm trying to finish this immediately uh, so that other people can work on this, uh, but just get started on the information here. But you can see there's just so many important areas, particularly in Africa, uh, and then some surprises. Uh, really, this area needs to be extra circled because of the wildlife, right? So you're getting earthquakes and you're getting lightning. It's really unbelievably important, uh, Sumatra and Malaysia, uh, because this is the gateway to the rest of the ocean. Uh, and this really even starts to begin to understand how important Thailand is, Cambodia, Vietnam, heading out into the ocean here, um, as well as Africa, right? Africa actually has Madagascar Island here. Um, and then also some very important uh, coastal lands over here in uh, Liberia. Uh, and there's actually a different climate map for that. So if you were looking uh, carefully, you'll see these climate areas are very important for basically rain uh, and lightning. So many of these red areas uh, actually do get quite a lot of lightning. And here in Africa, uh, you can also see that as well. So the climate shape of that map is definitely not the same as lightning, right? We saw that big cloud of lightning here. Um, one of the reasons for that um, is because it's dry and wet. So you get a uh, when that happens here, the south side is gets quite dry, as well as the north side. So there's kind of some weird um, 
movement of the atmosphere uh, between uh, these two regions, uh, as well as you can see this climate region out here uh, that's super important, right? So you can see this pocket here and all these little uh, areas, you know, it, I tried to explain this before, but there's not just a hundred, there's not just 10 types of monkeys, not just a hundred, there's thousands of types of different species of, that's just monkeys, right? And we have many thousands uh, per square mile of different types of species. It's not like the United States at all. Um, so India used to be, um, have lots of uh, interesting uh, animals and it could be right in this region here as well as over here in uh, some India, um, but the climate has changed quite a lot. And then down in Sri Lanka as well, um, there's some definitely uh, regions here um, and then there's Andaman Islands and then heading out here. So you can see again, the climate being super important uh, through here. Uh, fortunately, this is moving. So, and then this whole island uh, being very important because they're starting to populate this island now. So anyway, there's so much discussion uh, to go on. Um, but uh, the food situation is very uh, important to think about. Um, and you can see here on the climate map, um, most of the people living in Asia here, um, basically in India and in China, right? Uh, we're trying to look at that in detail. So I'm gonna have to continue this conversation later. Um, basically we have an extreme emergency for food uh, and clean water and some other things. Um, one of the reasons we wanna look at earthquakes and lightning is to help with clean water um, and understand what's going on better so we can actually solve those problems uh, both logically and spiritually. And it's just an absolutely desperate situation. Um, so we really need to try to uh, help out as immediately as we can uh, so before i close this i just wanted to give you a quick study of what i've been trying to do in detail right so we're going to zoom in here and hopefully uh, end this discussion really quickly so uh philippines actually is one of the most important areas for the uh, wildlife on the planet because of both ocean and uh the tropical environment and you saw the climate here so how can we use these earthquakes to really understand um, so you may want to see there's hot spots right here and here um, and also lightning areas, right? So we really want to notice here you can start to uh, spiritually translate what these earthquakes are meaning and you can see there's kind of a curvature down into here and there's actually a river that runs right through here. So it turns out that some of these areas right in here, you can see this mountain mountainous area, uh, we need to get, get extra spiritual attention uh, what's going on along the coast here. Um, because the animals are able to communicate uh, spiritually with the planet. Um, so uh, whether you believe stuff like this or not, uh, everything is connected uh, logically and spiritually. So uh, if you're lost in a world of logic, uh, you need to start thinking a little bit more uh, spiritually about things um, and uh, actually uh, be sensitive to the earth and the wildlife. Um, here you can see uh, down on the south side uh, kind of this bay. So a lot of these bays, the fish come in. And the reason, the importance for this is there's actually two ways to get to different islands. So the fish may travel um, between these two islands as well as birds, right? They, they travel uh, by ocean, uh, sometimes thousands of miles. So they go between these islands and this is very uninhabited islands right in here, uh, making some of these extremely important. You can see some of these new earthquakes heading out here. Uh, and I wanted to mention this uh, ocean here. So you can see uh, there's been some very, uh, in this Banda Sea area has been very active recently. Um, and actually this is super fished out. So um, super important uh, for us to really be cautious about that as well as lightning, uh, thinking about that as well. So now if you're thinking about the food situation, um, you know, people are basically uh, really struggling uh, for food, right? The entire place of India has been totally farmed out as well as Thailand um, except for up in the mountains right um, because you can't get a tractor up there and even you'll see these uh, rice fields that go right along the hills so they're even farming on the hills now uh, very steep hills so uh, but basically uh, you can start to see this here and I am trying to use these earthquake maps to basically tell uh, where we need to think about the wildlife uh, and the movement of the planet, right? So we started to use some of that uh, logical stuff to help us make spiritual understandings of what we need to do. And you can see back in here, uh, this is the only fresh and clean water and we're starting to get earthquakes there. Um, we definitely need to watch that very carefully. Um, and you can do this on all these earthquakes. And I definitely uh, recommend that as soon as possible 
uh, looking at the details. Um, and uh, it can be quite fun uh, to study it. So hopefully uh, there'll be some more people interested in working on this. So I just wanted to show you again really quick uh, how to do this. Uh, so you get this earthquakes, usgs.gov, earthquakes slash map. Uh, it might not work with this whole link. There's some bug there. Um, and then what you wanna do is you can add the hazards map if you want. Uh, there's the faults, this is the main faults. Uh, lines uh, it's kind of slow for some reason oh plate boundaries yeah so these are the red plate boundaries you can see uh, can help you and then you probably want to do a satellite imagery uh, and then you can sort this by newest first so we just got uh, again this is a geyser California earthquake uh, here and you can see this one was a 5.0 uh, just in the Philippines so we're actually almost live right now seeing uh, those earthquakes that we were just looking at in the Philippines uh, being super important uh, and you can see it's just more uh, a lot of Philippines earthquakes 5.0s are huge so uh, basically there's many of those <coughs> all in the period of one day right so very active uh, right here right now so uh, uh, and the nice part is you can uh, click on these and uh, for instance here's a very big one uh, and you can click here and they'll take you to this other link uh, you can get some data specifically for this and then you can search uh, for uh, like for example on Wikipedia here for this particular city uh, and it will tell you a little bit about that city um, and you can uh, sometimes even get uh, up here in the upper right hand corner you can get a satellite imagery uh, a bunch of different maps uh, showing you all these different maps uh, uh, including uh, Google Satellite, uh, Google Earth links uh, and some other things uh, to that region uh, to start uh, seeing what is going on there. So some of the really uh, debatable concepts are actually looking at translations, right? So once we start to look at a particular detail, uh, we have to spiritually understand uh, what's going on, right? Uh, so, you know, that takes some uh, detailed understanding um, of your own. Uh, so you can start to see this is like a fault line, but you may actually not be in agreement with some of these fault lines. So, uh, you know, and you can look at uh, details here. So uh, all these earthquakes, uh, particularly because there's so few in Africa, uh, um, become extremely important. Here you can see this is basically heading up along the Nile River. Um, so there's certainly some very important stuff to study there. Um, let's just zoom in on this one really quick. Um, you can see this one is on the west side of the island. We've been looking at this whole area for wildlife. Um, so there's a lot of population. You can start to see some of the cities in here. Um, but this actually is very important for wildlife. Um, you can see kind of the, some of the pollution in the lakes uh, by discoloration. Um, but uh, basically these should be like safari areas. Um, and uh, what's happening is that uh, down here, on this, you can see it's kind of been farmed out here um, a lot of wildlife is being pushed and then this is actually a lake but it's completely changed color um, perhaps from uh, the uh, microorganisms taking over the lake um, but here you can see uh, the importance of thinking about this area and here and you may let's just zoom in here so we can look at this one really quick um, so there's a lot of translation here involved um, because we really don't have uh, you know we just have to better understand uh, what this earthquake means um, both logically and spiritually to the wildlife there. So that's a lot of work right there on just that one in particular. Uh, so, uh, but this happens all over the world. Uh, you can see here, I'm gonna just zoom into Puerto Rico um, and you can see uh, basically these are all within the last 30 days. So quite a number of ones happening right here, similar to what we saw in Oceania, for example, Philippines um, and also Indonesia, right? Um, and then you can see the Andes Mountains ones kind of being off-centered from these. And some of this will tell us quite a lot. Um, this particular earthquake would be very important because there's a lot of wildlife right in here. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to thank everyone that's trying to look at this. Uh, it's a lot of stuff to think about. I'm trying to just take it easy. And I'm really sorry if this has been really a stress conversation. Uh, take it easy for a few days. Realize that whatever's outside there's my window i'm gonna walk around talk to the earth do some other things um, i try to spend as little time as possible studying this uh and i really am only studying this out of emergency because uh you know i went through a someone was sitting down with me the other day and uh it was kind of a terrible conversation but 
you know, basically the education that I got was not so, uh, it was, you know, it's wise to have a variety of knowledge um, beyond just a logical education. So <clears throat> um, sitting around looking at this on a computer is not the same as walking around and talking to earth. And we got rain today, we got clouds outside, we got uh, fantastic weather. Um, and, you know, it's uh, much more valuable uh, to think about what's going on in your local town and some other things sometimes uh, in addition to how that may be spiritually linked with the rest of the earth. I had a very funny conversation with my dad the other day. Uh, we were talking about opposite side of the earth and my dad was like, well, uh, Idaho and China are not on the opposite side. The opposite side of the planet is actually somewhere down in here. It's directly opposite. But you have to think about hemis. There's so many different debates that people have. Like you, you talk with someone that's very logical and they're gonna say, opposite side of the planet is precisely opposite. But if you start thinking spiritually, you might say, well, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere have different electromagnetic activity. One, one is going up, the other one is going down. And you're actually talking about, when you talk about opposite side of the planet, it may be that it's important to think about the same hemisphere uh, and not actually opposite hemispheres. Because if you get in the opposite hemisphere, it's a totally different direction that it's going off all the, all the spiritual fields because... Uh, the flow of electrons and the flow of the uh, magnetic field and electric field are totally different on opposite sides. We actually want to look at what's happening on the same sometimes. So there's different reasons and actually it's important to look at the opposite side too. So the, the debate with the completely logical people is important as well. Uh, but uh, it's important to look at everything. So, and just take a walk. So I'm getting done with this online stuff as soon as possible. I'm going to try to take a shower here uh, and, uh, you know, I try to get out of bed as soon as possible to talk with people about this because there's a lot of work to do um, in everything. All this information has to be studied. Uh, and the problem is we have people who, you know, here's, here's the situation, right? If you're a person that's never studied any science before, um, that's awesome because basically what happens is there's a whole corruption. You have to sit in school and study all this mathematics for many, many years and then you start to think exactly like them. Uh, you actually lose all sense of your spirituality and you become 100% stuck on the computer and focused on logical stuff that is actually not helpful. Uh, it's actually causing problems, right? Because we need to think uh, spiritually. So uh, I really hope that you have a fun time studying this in a new way and actually completely, you might not ever need to look at any of these maps again. You have the map right here. You could just go do something else with your life. Anyway, thank you so much. I hope you're having an awesome day. See you. Okay, thanks again. Uh, that was just an alarm going off. Uh, prayer time based on the position of the sun. Uh, some people never thought it was important to listen to Earth, listen to the wildlife. They were just stuck on some kind of crazy, logical, scientific nonsense. Just try to balance things out a little bit and learn to uh, work together with everyone. Thank you so much. See you later.